Good morning, and welcome to the St. Louis School Library Year in Review mini conference. We've got some great sessions scheduled for you this morning, and this is our second one. Let me introduce myself. First of all, I'm Shannon Steimel, Future Ready Librarian from Live for Life Academy, and um, these sessions will be uploaded to my YouTube channel, PD Bytes Today. Um, you can also follow the PD Bytes hashtag on Twitter for this mini conference. And I'd like to introduce to you our special guest host for all of our sessions, JP. I'll let you tell us uh, who you are and what you do and why you're here. Hey, everyone. Hey. I am everyone. JP Presvento. I serve the Fox School District in Arnold, Missouri as the Instructional Technology Coordinator. Um, you can connect with me on Twitter at JPPrez, follow my blog at JPPrez.com. Um, and so you might be wondering why an EdTech guy is co-hosting a library conference. One of my roles in Fox is that I facilitate the work of the Library Media Specialist uh, professional learning community. So I lead their PD, facilitate meetings, and kind of serve as a liaison between the libraries and central office and, and that kind of thing. So I'm really excited to be here and help Shannon provide this amazing learning opportunity and opportunity for networking and connecting with um, area librarians. Great. Thank you, JP. So um, our special guests for this segment are our Missouri Association of School Librarians Spring Conference co-chairs, and I will let them introduce themselves and uh, tell, them, I tell, you, tell you a little bit about what they do um, besides their uh, roles with Mazel. Um, and if you want to also just share a, a quick highlight from the Spring Conference, uh, that would be great as well. So why don't we start with Andrea? Hi, I'm Andrea Head. I am the uh, high school librarian at Francis House Central, Francis House School District. I'm also the content leader, content leader for the librarians of the district. Uh, besides being involved with Mazel as the co-chair with Carolyn this year, uh, I serve as secretary for the Greater St. Louis Regional Library Group. So that's been fun getting um, getting involved in a lot of uh, activities and organizations that you meet your peers, that networking opportunity is what has made my job more fun, actually. And as far as Mazel highlights, I think the, um, I think the What We Do theme was what made it kind of fun this year. It was just that we've reached a, a time in our jobs that we do so many things and we wear so many different hats that uh, that was highlighted very well throughout the conference. There was a variety of workshops that covered everything. You know, I know when I first started going nine, 10 years ago, it was books, it was about reading. And now it's about reading, it's about technology and it's about tools and resources and how you do all those things and how you advocate for yourself. And um, there was just a wide variety, you know, with the, the makerspace issues and things that it really was a good, all-encompassing theme of what we do. All right, I'm Carolyn Allen. I was uh, co-chair with Andrea this past year as well for Spring Conference. I am also the vice president of the Greater St. Louis Regional uh, Library Association with Andrea. And kind of the same, along the same lines as what she said, it's been a really good opportunity for me to get involved with Maslow, get involved with Greater St. Louis. I have met um, so many great librarians. In fact, lots of people who are on this uh, mini conference are people who I met through some of those connections at those different organizations. And without those organizations, you know, I wouldn't know all these awesome library folk that are helping me, you know, do a better job. And kind of to piggyback on what Andrea said about conference, um, we had some great keynote speakers. Carl Harvey was there. Um, Jennifer Cassatad talked about digital citizenship. Um, we had authors for our Reader Award winners last year, so that was really fun. It's always great to see the authors or illustrators um, at conference and see them be excited about accepting their award. Um, and just we had a lot of great networking opportunities. And I know when you're one of the only people in your building or very few in the district, it's nice to have those chances to just kind of be with your people and network and uh, get ideas. 
Great. Thank you, ladies, for introducing yourself. So, um, you know, of course, these two librarians have a wealth of knowledge that they could share with us. But what I thought um, would be great to focus on today is um, having been in charge of the spring conference um, to ask Andrea and Carolyn to think about, like, what are those trends in librarianship um, that um, were a focus for this year that we can kind of be thinking about um, and talk a little bit about. So let's get started with that. Um, really, we decided one of the big trends is future ready. And everyone knows uh, the future ready wheel and the chart and how that applies to librarians in particular. Uh, Colette has done a, a great job promoting that. Uh, um, brought in um, Kristen Madsen this year for they that we weren't able to do a pre workshop, but we did uh, a double workshop on the Monday. And she came in and spoke during the first half, and then there was a panel for a future ready panel of three superintendents, three lead librarians after that, that really addressed some of the issues in that future ready wheel. What, what did you do? Where are you? What are challenges? What are opportunities? And it was a, a great way to kind of focus on that. Also, the, the Greater St. Louis group has focused on future ready this year. So it's really been a trend in that. Uh, that's how we kicked off our year. You know, Shannon, you were there. Mindy, who will be another spotlight, you know, later today, she she was there sharing. And it's just a, a great way to bring librarians, I think, together to see, uh, so that we're all on the same page and we know what everyone's doing and what we can do and share ideas. And we'll continue that actually next Wednesday. We have another regional meeting where we will have somebody talking about marketing. That's a part of of the future ready of uh, advocacy and letting others know what we do and so there'll be somebody sharing that next week at our meeting on Wednesday and then we'll have time to share with each other how we're meeting uh, the needs of in our building for those future ready wheel or those cogs. Terrific. I'll be sure to add a link onto our uh, page for today's conference uh, where they can get more information about uh, that meeting because hopefully some other librarians can join in that maybe weren't planning to. Um, and also, you know, I think that what you're saying about marketing is, is so true. Um, you know, and you don't have to be a future ready district to be a future ready librarian, I think is another key point. Um, it, it's a lot about where librarianship is going. And so, um, you know, get on board even if, you're, if your district hasn't yet. Absolutely, because our, our district has not signed the pledge, but my superintendent was asked to attend. I was on the panel and um, it's all about what you do. It, it's great if you can sign the pledge, but it's kind of looking and learning as much as anything and anybody can do that. Terrific. Uh, so another thing we thought was very uh, big is diversity in the collection. That is a hot topic with librarians because um, there is, you just want to be able to provide titles to your population that for all students, things that they can identify with. You know, I, I grew up in, in the South in a small town and so maybe that's why I like realistic fiction so much, you know, some of those small town stories that uh, I can relate to. Others I probably can as much, but nobody can relate to what I, have been through either. So that diversity in collection, whether it's, you know, characters of different color, nationalities, lifestyles, is just a key component. I know um, several years ago when we had the Normandy students uh, being sent into the Francis House School District that year, I'm like, we need a better collection. And so we, we created, a, you know, a, a urban section that has been so, so popular with not only, you know, those students, but many of our other students as well, and it really addressed their needs. So that's a, a huge one. I think the state award nominees every year, our uh, committees at the state do a great job of trying to find those diverse titles in every age group there. Yeah. Um you know, that whole idea of windows and mirrors that we provide for our students, I think is really key. Um, you know, and I love that you built up your urban collection uh, and then realized that, hey, this is, uh, you know, not just something that the uh, Normandy kids would care about. Um, you know, being in 
the area where Ferguson happened, I think we're all very sensitive to Black Lives Matter and having a collection for that. Um, so I'm, gr I'm glad to hear that the uh, Maslow committees are also trying to be really responsive to uh, having a diverse collection for our Missouri readers to hear as well. Yeah, I would say to quick plug, if nobody has read The Hate You Give or Dear Martin, they are must reads uh, for anyone. So uh, I would say put those on your list. Yeah, you know, I hear The Hate You Give is going to be a movie too. I know book to movie is always a big thing for uh, my library patrons. So, yeah, Great. I'm excited about the movie. <laughs> okay, Great. Carolyn. Kind of piggybacking off of what Andrew said as far as diversity in the collection, um, I know especially being in a library in North County, that's something that, you know, I definitely have to think about is who are the characters in the books I'm purchasing. Um, and kind of along with that is student book choice, letting kids have the opportunity to pick books that they are interested in. Um, I'm lucky that I am not in a library or in a school where teachers are super hyper focused on Lexiles. Um, obviously, that's something that they deal with in the classroom and they test about, but um, they, they aren't forcing kids, oh, you have to get a book on this Lexile, which I think is good for kids, um, you know, to get that opportunity to read something that's maybe a little hard for them, a little easy for them, um, as long as it's something they're interested in. And just, I think it really engages kids by giving them that power to choose the book that they want to read. And when you have a diverse collection, it gives you, them so many more opportunities to find a book that they're interested in. Um, and I think having, um, being able to encourage student recommendations has been really powerful as far as um, sometimes kids recommending books to other kids is more powerful than me saying, oh gosh, this is a really great book. You should read it. And granted, a lot of them will still read it, even if I say it's a really good book, but if their friend says it's a good book, they're about 10 times more likely to pick it up than if just lowly old Mrs. Allen says it's good. So I think just having those opportunities, whether it's a bulletin board, um, you know, blog, Twitter, um, we don't do as much of the Twitter and blogging at the elementary level, um, but I know, you know, especially in that middle school and high school, that's a little bit more of a popular thing or a, um, something that more teachers and librarians are doing. So, uh, yeah, I, giving right. students the chance to choose. You know, I, one thing I've noticed is a lot of times those kiddos that are choosing books that are too hard for them at the um, beginning of the year, you know, if they stick with it, um, those are the kids that I often see their scores raise the most because they are challenging themselves. Um, so I think there's a lot to be said about free choice reads. Um, I also wanted to mention, I think that genrefying my collection has really helped with student book choice, um, not just because all the books are in one place that they like, but also because, you know, when they're looking for books in that section, they've got their peers right there with them that are also interested in those same books and can make the recommendations. Um, Andrea, your uh, district was one of the first ones uh, in the area to genrefy, as far as I know. Um, what effects have you seen from that? Our kids from the first moment we did it absolutely loved it. They would just sit there like when we explained that we had changed it, uh, they were like, that makes so much more sense. You know, that's the way they're looking. They're used to looking for things. So, you know, we said if, if you like sports, then go to the sports section. If you like sci-fi, go to the sci-fi section. And um, it's so much easier for us to even approach them and say, what do you like? Because you can just go and see where they're looking. And you know that, that, you know, they're looking at a certain section. And so you're like, oh, have you read this one? And you can follow up with that. So uh, as far as student book choice, too, I would add, you know, the um, Kelly Gallagher and Penny Kittle uh, have written a book together that talks about conferencing with students and really trying to tap in with uh, their needs and what they really like to read and trying to put the right book in their hand to grow that to gain back, you know, we see so much at middle school is kind of when students will gravitate away from really that enjoyment of reading. And I think it's because we've taken their choice away. And so they really have a great book about how you give them that choice back and bring that, that in enjoyment of reading. Is that, it have like 180 in the title? 180 days or, or something, oh yeah. 
I'll, I'll be sure to link that book. Um, you know, I looking forward to reading that. Of course, those are two great voices. And I bu uh, book love for Penny Kittle is one that I always um, try to get my secondary uh, teachers to read. And more recently, uh, Passionate Readers from uh, Pernille Rip is one I've been recommending for um, our uh, middle school uh, teachers. Yeah, link that as well, because I'd like to see that. <laughs> okay, I'll, will do. So breakout, breakout. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Breakout's been on the scene for uh, this is probably going into what second or third year, uh, but I just don't see it going away. There's so many different ways to do breakout, and if you know viewers aren't familiar with it, just go to Breakout Edu, uh, check one out. It has been a great open source website that you can look at, get ideas for literally any content area. And it goes along with the whole escape room kind of phenomenon that's going on across the country. Uh, the students love the actual physical boxes, but if you can't afford the physical boxes and the locks and all of those things, there's also digital ways to do it. And I know Carolyn has done a number, you know, a number of those this year with her school because she just doesn't have as many boxes. So that's another great way. They're challenging, they're engaging. Uh, you can really find your students' strengths and you find those leaders that you wouldn't normally always find. You know, they, they kind of come out on the scene and, and it's a great way to empower them. It, you know, they might be a quiet student otherwise, but you give them a challenge like this, they really shine. So I love that about it. Great team building exercise. We've had some of our teams do it here uh, for that kind of issue. That's been awesome. You can introduce curriculum. You can review curriculum. And I think the librarian's role in doing that is that uh, we're the hub. And so we can provide these resources for the teachers when they can't afford it, nor should they have to. You know, you shouldn't have to have all these resources sitting in your room and nobody else. That's, that's the purpose of really what libraries do is share resources. And so if we can facilitate that and help with that and help set it up to support them, then it's a great way for us to collaborate. And just real quick uh, to mention on the digital, I know we're running low on time, but digital, um, I actually made a couple this year for my, um, my third, fourth graders. Um, kind of because of the issue of not having enough boxes as well as some of our classes are maybe not the best at being up moving around a lot. Um, so sometimes the, on the computer the digital ones are a little bit, it's easier for them to focus more. Um, and it's great because on the Breakout EDU website there are resources and links to different tools that you can use to create your own. And I just used a Google site and was able to really easily use those different resources. So even if you're not an expert, and I'm definitely by no means an expert, um, you know, if you have access to Google sites, it's actually pretty easy. And the kids actually really like it, especially when I tell them, well, I made this and made sure. And they're like, oh my gosh, you made that, Mrs. Allen? That's really cool. I'm like, uh, well, you know, uh, yeah, it is. So it's a great way to get them learning but kind of playing at the same time so they don't think they're learning. All right, um, STEAM, Makerspace Coding, uh, Novel Engineering, all that is, again, really, really hot right now. And I think kind of like Andrea said about Braille, I think it's going to continue just because the STEAM, the Makerspace STEM, um, it kind of provides those options for real world skills, which I think is something that is really important, I think, um, you know, once the kids get out in the real world, they, they need to know how what they learned has been, you know, what they learned is actually helpful. And I know that um, for teaching fifth grade, sometimes I would get that question, well, why do I need to know long division? Why do I need to know this? And so I think some of those STEAM and makerspace activities can help bring those connections in and make the learning more engaging, more powerful. Um, it's problem solving, it's hands-on. Um, one of the things that I really like about bringing in those activities is you can kind of sneak in science and math when you're doing reading. So when I do them in the library, um, especially with my elementary kids, we'll read a story. Um, we'll do maybe read an article, some nonfiction, kind of talk about, well, the book is fiction, but the article is nonfiction, you know. So we get those kind of connections with the reading, but then the task might be to build something or make something. 
Um, and with the younger guys, we're not doing a whole lot of real specific measuring or anything like that. But especially with the older kids, I mean, you can get into some of those, well, if you need to make a box that will fit this much weight or hold this much weight, they're kind of forced to use those math and science skills. But at the same time, they're building, it's hands-on. So it uh, falls kind of into that um, problem or project-based learning. Uh, so, you know, I think we could probably spend a whole mini conference talking about uh, STEAM and makerspace, um, but unfortunately we're out of time, so we'll have to stop there. Um, one of the things that I'll say is um, I've been a little late coming to this uh, game, and I think that part of it is um, having been an English teacher before I became a librarian, I'm not as comfortable with um, science and engineering and math. And so um, partnering with the, my science teachers has really kind of opened things up for me um, and made me feel more confident. And, uh, you know, I'm sure uh, the ed tech specialists in your building can also probably uh, be a great resource, as I'm sure JP is for his uh, district and Fox. Um, and the other thing I would mention is, you know, I did a deep dive into the a the new AASL standards uh, this semester. And um, one of the things I discovered is, you know, makerspace is, is in there in the, the new standards. So I don't think it's going away. <laughs> nope. Hey, can I ask a quick question before we wrap this one up? Um, so Carolyn and Andrew, this is for both of you guys. Um, you know, when we think about playing to the strengths of our team, um, like how do you, do you have folks who really aren't into the maker, the idea of the maker space or folks who kind of shy away from that? And is that something you say, Hey, yeah, you know, let's play to your strengths. Let's do, let's focus on things you're good at. Or do you try and nudge them in that direction? Um, for me, it's it's hard because um, I'm on a fixed schedule as a sp in the special area rotation. I don't have as much time for collaborating and getting teachers involved as I would like. Um, for me, I just kind of take those teachers who are willing and say, hey, we're doing this in class um, just because of timing. I would love to push more and be able to say, hey, what are you guys doing in science? I want you to come in and I want to do something in the library. Um, that's kind of one of my goals for next year. So I, I, for me, it's, it's tricky just because of the, the schedule aspect for me. Uh, for me at high school, I would say that our, uh, we call them food Fridays. They're really tech luncheons for our staff that we have once a quarter and we will share tools and resources. And so by doing that, uh, what, whether it's breakout or makerspace, uh, we just did one on clips, uh, you know, with the iPads. Uh, it's a great, great way to collaborate, and you will get so much uh, traction with that, and that those teachers will have ideas of things that they would use it for, and so they start reaching out to you. But that's part of, you know, again, the future ready wheel is that you uh, lead beyond the library, and you have to be a professional development leader in your building. And, and they will come to you when you're able to do that. Terrific. So thank you so much, uh, Carolyn and Andrea, for joining us for this session. I hope um, everyone will uh, join you uh, on Wednesday for uh, the next meeting. And uh, so coming up next, we've got uh, Mindy Botkin. But before that, uh, we say goodbye. I want to give JP a chance to give a quick plug for an up, another upcoming uh, Librarian PD opportunity. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Shannon. So I'm excited to announce um, what I believe to be the first EdCamp LMS, EdCamp Librarian. Uh, we're going to host that here at Fox High School sometime in September. The tentative date we're looking at is September 15th, as long as I get the space on that day. So I'm hoping for lots and lots of library media specialists to come hang out on September 15th for a day of learning for you by you. Terrific. So um, if you're joining us for Mindy's session, it's time to hop out of this one and hop in to that new link and I hope to see you for the next one. Bye guys. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye.